Greetings, it's your friendly neighbourhood Chappers here today to talk about live. You might think, hmm, it's a little bit premature, Chappers, to talk about the live thing, but actually probably not because I've been booked to play a festival called Black Deer Festival in June. Lots of my friends are being booked to play. Live is gonna come back and it's really exciting because we've had a year off and frankly I'm getting rusty. It's time to get rid of the rust, shake off the dust, and get on a stage. So let's prepare and let's talk about gear because gear is very exciting. Not everybody can kind of, you know, afford Bogner or Victory or, you know, maybe you know, an Orange or, or a Fender. Some of these bits of gears are aspirational. And when I was a student and I started gigging, going to local pubs in Trowbridge and Wiltshire, where I cut my teeth, I <clears throat> quickly found out that the way I wanted to sound cost quite a lot of money and was going to be something that took me time to get there. And I kind of thought, you know what, there's probably loads of people that started playing guitar at the beginning of the pandemic who might have had a year of practice and might now, when it's kind of the plague is over, they might want to reach out, get some friends, join a little jam group or, or form a band even and get on a stage next year. And this is a video where I recommend the gear that you could use for under a thousand Imperial credits of the British realm, although I'm in Malta. Let's get into it. I'm excited for many of you to enjoy the rigors of living in a van, in a bag, and how to sleep on a, a scrunched up shirt in the back of a, <laughs> an estate car. <laughs> Hands up or comment if you have fit an entire drum kit and band in an estate car and toured your glorious country. I know I have. It's, it's an important rite of passage, you know? It's something that we all have to do as musicians and I'm excited for it to come back. It won't be any surprise to you to know that the amplifier I am recommending is the classic Katana from Boss. I've gone for the 1x12 100 watt version. It is absolutely amply loud enough for live uh, in fact, you probably won't be able to wind it up provided you're at a regular venue where they mic you up and put you through a PA. I've only ever gigged twice without a PA. Once on a farm and once in a pub that wasn't really a venue, but we convinced it that it could be. <laughs> so nowadays, everything's mic'd up and you don't need, you know, I mean, you don't really need 100 watts, but it's great to have 100 watts there just in case. So this... 100 watt katana combo is like 320 British pounds. Um, but then you think, all right, well, it's got loads of effects built into it. That's really helpful. Um, but I'm gonna need my pedals and blah, blah, blah. No, you're not. Because in comes the incredibly handy, uh, what the is it called? Oh, it's called the GAFCB and for roughly 80 of your beautiful wooden ingots of hard-earned time, you can get one of these. And then what I've done is I've set up four distinctly different sounds. <clears throat> I've got a rhythm, like a crunch. I've got a, a high gain that could be, you know, lead or chuggy, chuggy chug chugs. I've got a fun, um, funky kind of sound because I just wanted to show off some of its ability. And then I've got a clean sound that I will never use. <laughs> You can also set it to panel and you can add in effects and you can have your own pedals built in. But the amp and this comes to a staggeringly really good for value and I'm not uh, being sponsored for this video. 400 pounds altogether. That's 400 pounds, finance, not weight, um, for an amp and all the effects you would ever need. So we are 400 pounds down so far. We've got a little bit of money left to spend. So let's take a look at things you might also require. Well, I would recommend one of these. It is a tuning pedal. I would only ever buy the ones from Boss and I would definitely get the TU3 or the Wadzacraft if you can afford it. The Wadzacraft pushes us over budget just a little bit because I'm also recommending that you buy Pedal Train. Pedal Train make incredibly cool boards. Uh, this is one of them. This is the Metro 24 and this is what I tour with when touring is a thing, which it is soon. Um, you can fit 
a whole load of pedals on it. If you're really clever, like my friend Dave Hollingworth, you can stack pedals on top of each other and get away with murder. But one of these boards is fairly affordable and the budget that I have allowed would allow for one of these boards, this tuning pedal and a handy dandy affordable uh, power outlet to this one pedal. But I'm gonna presume you already have a few pedals up your sleeves. Come on, admit it. You have been purchasing pedals all plague. Everyone's got a plague pedal collection. I know, I have. So, loud box, foot switch on the floor that will allow you to access a myriad of different tones, a pedal board so that you feel great, and you've got a tuning pedal so that you can stay in tune for your first gig in a pub or wherever you're gonna go, and a little power supply. Next thing is we need a guitar. Now, I own a guitar company. I am massively biased, but I want to tell you why I've chosen a Chapman. <laughs> this, can you tell I'm having fun? This is a hybrid standard. If you don't like the color, I personally love the color. It comes in three of them. Here's another one. Just as an example of another kind of color that it could come in. So, stay there. These Fender Twins make fantastic guitar racks. <laughs> the reason this is a great choice is because it's incredibly affordable for what you get. Chapman Guitars doesn't have a distributor. Most guitar companies go from factory to a distributor to the retailer and the distributor takes a 25, 30% chunk. We don't do that. We allow our retailers, our dealers, the stores to order direct from our factory, which means that we chop off that 30% chunk and we put a lot of that cash back into the guitar and we give some to the retailers because it's pretty hard work selling guitars and making a living. So, um, baked maple neck, nickel frets, uh, it's a bolt-on construction, as you can see from here. It's a recessed bolt-on. Beautiful, dark, very rolled neck. If you like a rolled-on neck, this feels like someone has gone for a hundred years and then passed, <laughs> this looks way worse than it's supposed to be, and then uh, passed it back. These pickups were designed and created by myself and the wonderful guys at Chapman Guitars, including Beer and Dave and everyone that you know and love. And they sound really, 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 really good. And I'm very proud of them. We're all very proud of them. Uh, it comes in, like I said, three different colors. You can see it's got a beautiful flamey top and um, it has these Chapman 18-1 gear ratio tuners. It's an ML1 standard hybrid. Let me show you why I'm recommending it for a live rig. First of all, <clears throat> if you wanted to, and I have uh, these two, well, that one's Luke's, my friend Luke's. This one is for the studio, and then I've actually got one at home that I use regularly. And what I've done with my tremolo, because I don't really use a trem, and I use a lot of altered slide tunings in Clockwork, Wolf & Company, and Dorje for that matter, I've actually screwed this down and tensioned the springs so that it will not move. It will not move at all. And then you can, it's a hardtail. But if you didn't want it to be a hardtail, you can just have it as a floating, you know, thing, and it's a floating thing.
I'm not a tremolo guy, but I appreciate that many people are a tremolo person. Um, so yes, tremolo, screw it down if you want. Pickups, I recommend that you screw this middle one down a little bit to give you a bit of room for your pick. Um, and then also it gives you an interesting volume dynamic when you're switching around, which is where we're getting to now. Bear with me, I promise not to digress too much. If you want it, on tap is full bore ridiculous, ridiculousness. <laughs> I put a bit too much delay on this patch, I'm sorry. But without touching the foot switch, if I bring it into maybe one off the top and then back off the volume. As you can hear, it's clean, it's got a crunch. I'll put it in the middle position. Brightens up. One away from the humbucker. Right up in the neck. Now if I begin to wind the volume up... You can kind of get out of it whatever it is that you need to get out of it. Did you want a bluesy tone or a clean tone or a high gain tone? It's, we call it the hybrid because high powered, angry and loud or chilled back and funky and bluesy are in the same package on this guitar. And it's only 500 notes, it's 499 I think, um, GBP. And yeah, it's my one of my new favorite things to play on because it's so, Flexible, you know, you want an S type thing, you put it at the top or in the middle. You want an LP type thing, you put it down at the bottom and you've got both of those eventualities. So the amp and the GA XYZ thing on the floor was 400. This is 499, 500. So you got your 100 quid left or thereabouts to get the pedal board, to get the tuner, maybe a packet of strings and a whatever. And hey presto, Bob's your mother's brother. <laughs> There's an entire rig for under 1,000 Imperial credits of your realm. What would you recommend? What would you have done different? Um, what would you have chosen for guitar or amplifier? I'm interested to hear your opinion. Also, really excited that the shops have started opening again and I can go out and have someone else make me a coffee rather than me. I'm bored of making my own coffee. That sounds awful, but I really like human contact. <laughs> Talking of human contact, please reach out with your shiny individual digit and touch the like button and then if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and then touch that bell so that you actually see the video. Have an amazing day. Take it easy. Chappers out.